Am I the asshole for bringing an emotional support animal to a funeral despite my daughter's wishes? I am a 38 male. Daughter Isa, fake name, is 17 female. Stepdaughter Ava, also fake name, is 9 female. Isa's stepfather recently died. I felt terrible because I knew while they weren't super close, he'd been in her life since she was 5, so I knew it must have hit hard. My family was also invited to the funeral. The issue is, however, is Ava has horrible social anxiety. She's homeschooled because of it and has difficulty going to social outings. She's in therapy and has an emotional support rabbit named Luna. Since this funeral would be pretty crowded, we decided to let Ava bring Luna to the funeral. Isa, my daughter, had a problem with that. Isa quickly told me she didn't think it was a good idea. Pets were not allowed at this particular cemetery. I told her this was a rabbit. What harm could it do? And Ava had a medical reason for bringing her rabbit. She then looked it up on Google and showed me only service animals were allowed to come. I told her I'd bring Luna and if an issue arose, we'd leave. She begged me not to, saying her stepdad's death was already hard enough on her mom and she didn't want any drama to make it worse. I told her I'd think about it and keep that in mind. The thing is, Ava needs her emotional support pet. She wouldn't make it through the funeral if she didn't. She also really wanted Ava there, so what else could we do? Isa drove to the funeral with her mom. While my family and I drove together, we brought Luna. Isa and her mom were waiting for us at the entrance when we got out. When Isa saw Luna, she freaked out and started yelling that she told me not to bring her. I explained Ava's needs and she then screamed that Ava should have just stayed home then and caused Ava to cry. I felt bad because I know she was already dreading the social interaction, so hearing her sister say that must have hurt her badly. My wife and Isa got into it after that. Not so kind words were spoken by either party. Her mom took Isa's side and told us to leave. I agreed and we went home. Isa has been giving me the cold shoulder, but I don't know how else I could have handled this differently. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling my child's daycare teacher that my child won't finish cleaning up? My two-year-old daughter has been in a home daycare for a few months now. The teacher, Sasha, is very nice. I am normally all for my daughter cleaning her own messes. However, I find when I arrive, Sasha expects my daughter to finish cleaning up whatever she was playing with, which again would be fine, but it delays us getting out the door and heading home. Sometimes we have plans, etc. I started texting Sasha when I was so many minutes away, asking her to get my daughter ready, and that seemed to work. My daughter would be in her jacket and reading a book, easy to put away versus a huge project. Until today, things were crazy and I was in a rush. We had a lot to do this afternoon and I was running behind because I had car trouble. When I arrived, my daughter and some friends were in the middle of cleaning up a big mess. I told my daughter that we had to go and to get her coat. Sasha said she needed to finish cleaning up her part. I said, any other day, sure, but I am running late and we cannot miss this appointment. Sasha tried arguing that the kids need to learn responsibility and I flat out said no. I grabbed my daughter, put her coat on and left. As I said, hectic afternoon, so I only just now had time to check my text. I had one from Sasha saying poor planning on my part doesn't mean I can break rules. I pointed out this is not in the contract and I can bring my child home whenever I need or want. She accused me of undermining her authority. I was given a verbal warning, which I found ridiculous. Am I the asshole? My husband is cheating on me with my best friend. I am honestly not sure where to start, so I guess I'll just start. My husband and I have been dating since I was 19 and he was 22. We've been married for six years now. We have two kids and I'm six months pregnant with our third. Two years ago, I found out my dad had stage three colon cancer. My dad is my only parent as my mom passed away when I was 12. He's my favorite human and life without him doesn't seem as colorful. His laugh is contagious and he gives you these big bear hugs that seem to make all of your broken pieces feel like they're perfectly in place again. Whenever I've had a hard day, he doesn't poke and prod and just lets me vent and listen. About five months ago, we discovered the treatments aren't working for him and in direct quote of the doctor, he said months, not years. Since then, he's gone progressively worse and now is losing memory. He looked at the dog he got for me on my 21st birthday and said, wow, that's a nice dog. Where'd you get it? My husband has been my absolute rock. He has been there for me holding my hand and has helped me through this. He's been so loving and attentive to both my kids and I. Don't get me wrong, I'm a mother first always. I don't allow myself to wallow. My kids are still loved, cared for, played with, and I haven't let my load slack around the house. Once my dad got his updated prognosis, my husband encouraged me to quit my job. About a month later, we discovered we were pregnant again and I still hadn't let go of my job. I kept holding out for some reason. After finding out I was pregnant again, he ensured me it was still okay to quit my job honestly it would save us a small fortune on daycare costs anyway so i did i quit my job my best friend and i have been friends since diapers her family is like my family and vice versa my mom and her mom grew up together 
We've always been solid, and right after my dad's appointment, when we found out he had so little time left, I drove straight to her house, and she held me while I cried for hours. If there are soulmates in friend form, she was mine. Thick as thieves is what my mom used to say. This morning as I was up with my three-year-old, he's sick. My husband's work alarm was going off. He has a few he sets, so I turned that one off and gently woke him up. He said he was up late working, so he took the morning off, rolled over, and went back to sleep. As I went to turn off the remainder of his alarms, I saw a text from my friend on his lock screen that said, I'm assuming since there hasn't been an angry pregnant lady on my doorstep, you haven't told her about us yet? Time froze in that moment. I took his phone and walked away and just read their conversations. Four months, this man has been f***ing my best friend. Four months, these people have been lying to my face. And I know what you're going to say. You should have seen the warning signs. But I've been clutching this phone in my hand for two hours and nothing. He has been so loving and attentive to me. But he always has been. So kind and gentle. There has been no late night work nights except for once in a blue moon. There's been no lingering touches between them or even glances. They act as they have since the first day I introduced them. How sick is it that she calls him her brother but screws him? I know so many people get a moment of clarity in situations like this, but I have none. Aside from being sad about my dad, I haven't changed. I'm still a loving wife and mother. I still doted on him and my children. I talk to him about how he is doing and how was his day every freaking day. I haven't allowed the ground to swallow me whole. I know what I have to do now, but I just don't want to. I'm about to lose my family and my support system in one blow. I am leaving my husband because of my mother-in-law. <laughs> I have been married to my husband for five years. Of those five years, I spent the last three years taking care of his mother. His mother is very sick. She can hardly go to the bathroom on her own. I have to wash her and clean her. He never discussed it with me. He just moved his mother into our house without asking me. Mm. I suggested that we should hire a nurse and he said it was a waste of money. Why do we need to hire a nurse when we can take care of her? My husband promised he would help, but he hasn't lifted a finger. I do everything. I feed his mum, I bathe her, I clean her after she does her business. I'm exhausted and I feel like a lesser version of myself. I don't recognize myself in the mirror anymore. I always clock on for her, and my husband doesn't help me, but he expects me to help his mother. He just comes home and plays video games. The plague of video games on our society. I know, it's so, <laughs> like, typical. <Yeah. laughs> it's so typical. <laughs> I complained about this and he yelled at me. He said he is very stressed about his mother and he needs video games to calm his nerves. I know I, I, know I just gave shit to video games, but, like... I get as a sidebar that maybe they can be helpful for some people, but mm -hmm. like, okay, whatever. The only time I saw him do anything was his mum's birthday. We were about to start a family last year, but he said not now and has the audacity to complain that I do not look myself anymore. Oh. So he says I have eye bags, my skin looks dry, my hands start to resemble his own mother. Ew. I'm what? just done now. I sacrificed my job for him. I left my job and took a part-time job just to take care of his mum. Mm. I should have left when four years ago I asked him to lend me some money for my dad's operation and he gave me a bunch of excuses. Mm. So there's a massive double standard going on here. Mm. He even criticised me if I spend too much time with my own sick dad. Today at work, he is going to be served. I have been planning my escape for a few months. I'm staying with a close relative. I have money saved. I'm glad I didn't have kids with this man. Mm, God. A whirlwind. Unfortunately, I feel like that is a bit of a common story. Yeah. A lot of women take on this role of carer. And because we don't value carers in society mm. very highly, um, yeah, you end up feeling really, really burnt out it's totally unfair my thoughts are with this person like i'm glad that at the end she's kind of like i'm done yeah she's like he's being served <laughs> yeah which i don't think is always the case like yeah. sometimes people are so in it and drowning in it that they can't see that it's not right and that she's being taken advantage of so props to this woman good for her am i the asshole for throwing my friend a surprise birthday party and not inviting her secret married lover 
Wow, let's get into it. A girlfriend and I threw our other girlfriend a surprise birthday party. It was a large gathering that included her family, friends, and business associates. She's the kind of person who loves these sorts of celebratory events, and the surprise aspect of this wasn't upsetting or uncomfortable for her at all. She absolutely loved the party and all the effort we put into it. The issue came afterwards when the man she's having a secret affair with loses his shit that he wasn't invited. He's married, she isn't, and no one knows about the affair except the two of us friends throwing the party. Now, I don't care at all about how he felt about being excluded. He, however, successfully got our friend upset about it as well, to the point of her telling us it was crappy of us not to invite him. What the hell? I'm absolutely shocked she had the audacity to say this to us. Am I in the wrong? Am I the asshole for deciding to spend time with my newborn daughter than with my wife? I, 27 male, am doing my residency in a surgical specialty working 12-hour shifts regularly. More often than not, I work more than 80 hours a week. A few days ago, I worked a 24-hour shift at the hospital and got Monday evening off. My wife, 24 female, wanted us to go out for dinner, but I told her that I'd prefer staying at home with our infant daughter. That way, I can spend some time with both her and our daughter, who I don't see nearly as much as I want to and also get some rest. I told her that I understand being cooped up all day at home can be very boring, so we could do something quick, 30 minutes or less, but that I want to spend most of our time at home. She was pretty upset by this, but I'm honestly past arguing at this point. Don't get me wrong, my wife is a wonderful mother and wife, and taking care of a newborn is certainly not easy but she is also supported by my parents who live with us and is not doing anything anywhere near as physically or cognitively demanding as what I am doing. I'm dangerously close to crossing over into burnout territory with how much I am working and it would be hard to continue functioning at this pace without any rest. Besides, I don't want to compromise a single second with my baby for anything else unless I absolutely have to. I'm not spending nearly as much time with her as I should. Am I the asshole? My girlfriend left me on the day I was proposing without any explanation. Elise and I have been together for three years and living together for one and a half years. Our relationship was very strong and we were madly in love. All of our friends always used to say that we were a perfect couple. Our communication was strong. We had everything planned in our lives. I told her I won't be marrying her before I get a job that pays well enough to build our family and she agreed. Well, I got a very good job two months ago and we started planning our lives together. Our plan was to get married in the next year or two, buy a house, and then have kids when we have more financial stability. She also started dropping hints that I should propose. I was already planning to propose, so I started researching for rings, proposal venues, etc. This is when I contacted Leah and asked her to meet me and keep it a secret. I told her my plans and she confirmed that Elise would love this and also gave me some suggestions which I loved. Leah also included David as the three of them were best friends since childhood and knew each other very well. They also helped me pick the ring. The plan was to rent a cabin surrounded by nature and wilderness as Elise likes that a lot. I rented the cabin and on Friday I took the day off without telling my girlfriend and met up with Leah and David and one of my friends to set up everything. I gave instructions to my friend about how I wanted everything to be set up as he was supposed to go there the next day before us and set up everything. Flowers, cameras, etc. I went back home after that and ordered Elise's favorite takeout. We talked about her day and then went to bed. Now, a week ago, Leah had invited Elise for brunch on Saturday, proposal day, at a new fancy place, the proposal location. She emphasized that the place was fancy so that Elise wouldn't get suspicious of Leah asking her to wear a nice dress. On Saturday morning, Leah and David came to her apartment to pick up Elise. As soon as they left, I called a friend of mine who was waiting just around the corner and I left soon after. Then, I called my other friend, who was supposed to be at the cabin, and asked him how everything was going. He assured me that everything was set up exactly how I wanted it. I had also asked David to share their location and to drive slowly or take a longer route so that I could get there 10 to 15 minutes before them. I realized David hadn't shared the location, but it was fine. We got there and I just ran in to change into the suit. Then I went to the exact position and checked the camera angles. Everything was perfect. Then I waited for my girlfriend and her friends to arrive. The drive was 30 to 40 minutes from our apartment and they should have been there. I thought they went slightly overboard with stalling. I waited there for another 20 minutes. It had already been more than an hour since they left the apartment and I was getting worried. So I asked one of my friends to call David and sneakily ask how long it'll take them. They called him two to three times, but no answer. Then they called Leah two to three times, no answer. I assumed the worst. I called David and Leah as well. Still no answer. Finally, I decided to call Elise. First call, she didn't answer. My heart was racing at this point. 
As soon as I called her again, Leah answered and said, I was panicking and asked her if everything was all right and why is nobody answering their phone? She went silent for two seconds and then started yelling at me. She told me to never call Elise again and that I was dead to her, that I was a horrible human being for doing that to her, that she doesn't want to see my face or talk to me ever again. I was confused, but before I could say anything, she hung up. I was so confused and started crying and my friends had to console me. Soon after that, I got a text from Leah that she'll be coming over later with David to get Elise's stuff and that Elise doesn't even want to step in the apartment, even if I'm not there. I immediately called her parents to ask what was going on. They knew about the proposal and we were supposed to go to their home for lunch after the proposal. They had no clue what was going on and told me that they'll call her and ask. I got a call from them 10 minutes later saying that they called Elise and she told them that she can't talk right now and that she'll call them later. They were also confused about all this. I was devastated and I didn't know what to do. My friends took me back to my apartment and we hung out. David and Leah came over in the evening to take Elise's stuff. My friends and I tried to talk to them, but they didn't say anything. They just asked me where Elise's stuff was and just took some of it and said they'll be back for the rest. They also reiterated that if I tried contacting Elise again, I'll be reported for harassment. At that moment, I just wanted to cry because just the thought of me harassing my girlfriend was overwhelming. After they left, my friends told me that they think I shouldn't be alone right now and that they were staying the night and won't take no for an answer. We stayed up and talked till 4 a.m. last night, and then everyone went to bed. I wasn't able to sleep, and I've just been thinking about every potential reason for Elise's behavior, but I don't have any answers. The only scenario I can think of is that Elise was cheating on me and somehow realized I was going to propose, and she freaked out, told her friends that she can't do this because I cheated on her. This still doesn't make sense, but it's the closest thing to an explanation I can have right now. I know it's a horrible thing to think about, Today was supposed to be the first day of our engaged life together. Hopefully, I'll be able to get some answers from her parents if they talk to her. Also, there's no update for all the haters out there that say that I never post one. There is none. I'm getting married in two weeks and I am totally screwed. I literally need to get this off my chest. I feel like I am going insane. My fiance, Sarah, 28 female, and me, 34 male, have known each other for about six years, engaged for one. Our wedding is scheduled to take place in just two weeks, and I just witnessed something that is making me feel like I am making the biggest mistake in my life. Tonight, Sarah and I were taking a rare opportunity to relax at home. Sarah was in the kitchen making dinner while I was out back working on one of my projects. We live on an acreage, and I'm building a fire pit in the backyard that we were planning on using this fall. Anyway, as you do when you're doing heavy labor, I get thirsty and come back to the house to get a drink, where I see Sarah at the counter preparing dinner and talking on speakerphone. I recognize the voice instantly as my brother-in-law, Marty. Now this is where my brain gets totally twisted. Marty asks Sarah where his sister Evelyn is, as he's been trying to get in contact with her. She's not answering texts and I hear Sarah say to him, she just left here. She should be home in a half hour or so. It should be noted that Evelyn is Marty's wife of five years. I have to admit that I didn't immediately register what she had just said, because I went into the kitchen and grabbed a glass and asked Sarah, what was that all about? And she responds with, Marty was looking for Evie. I see her texting and I ask her, what are you doing? And she says, I'm texting Evie that Marty was looking for her. Anyway, I pour myself a drink, sit down, have a sip, and finally my brain starts to work. First off, I heard Sarah tell Marty that Evelyn was here. Evelyn was not here. And the last time we saw her was yesterday when she would come over to work on some last minute wedding decoration stuff with Sarah. Secondly, why is she texting Evelyn and expecting a response when I distinctly heard Marty say that Evelyn wasn't answering her text? Lastly, why the hell would she tell Marty that Evelyn should be back in 30 minutes unless she either knows where she is, then why did she lie, where she is, right now, in front of me, texting her to tell her to get her butt home quickly? The only conclusion that I can come up with is that Sarah is lying to Marty about the whereabouts of her sister, Marty's wife. He's probably warning Evie that Marty will expect her home in a half an hour. I then spent probably the next five hours concocting various explanations for this behavior. Some decent, some downright horrible, and playing them back in my head. I wanted really badly to ask Sarah about this, but at the same time, if what I think is really going on, then I doubted I'd get a straight answer. Which brings me to about a half hour ago. I woke up around 1am to use the toilet, and I couldn't resist the urge to check Sarah's phone. We both know each other's pins, so this wasn't a difficult thing to do. Anyway, I grabbed the phone, retreated to the bathroom, and unlocked it, 
And yep, it was exactly what I was afraid of and probably what most of you were expecting. Sarah's sister Evelyn has been having an affair for about six months with a coworker, and Sarah has been helping Evelyn to cover it up for almost the entire time. There are literally hundreds of texts between them discussing it, discussing the coworker, discussing stuff, really embarrassing things about my brother-in-law, and probably uncharitable. Just stuff that makes my stomach churn, and here is my soon-to-be wife going along with all of it without batting an eye. I took some screenshots of the entire thread, put the phone back where I found it, and then retreated to my home office to find myself here typing it all out on Reddit, simply so I can avoid the primal scream that wants to come out of my mouth right now. I am totally 100% screwed. I cannot marry Sarah. I just cannot do it. I can't think of any reasonable excuse she could offer me about assisting her sister in this affair and victimizing not only Marty, but their two-year-old daughter as well. On the other hand, myself, my family, Sarah, and her family have all sunk an enormous amount of money into a wedding that is supposed to happen in around two weeks. There's no way we are getting any of that money back. On top of that, I feel like an absolute fool. Like, how did I not know this woman was like this? And what the hell am I going to do? I can't marry her. I absolutely cannot. However, I still want to. She's beautiful and fun and kind, and I thought we had a bright future ahead of us. She's never done anything wrong to me, but I just can't see her the same now. It's like a big black stain on an otherwise beautiful picture. Am I the asshole for ruining my brother's date night and having him come pick up his three-year-old son after he dropped him off to my house right before my shift? I don't know. Let's see. I, I, I'm going to say no, but let's see. I kind of want y'all to start doing that. I want y'all to predict before. I want y'all to comment and predict what y'all think it's going to be. And then I want y'all to like listen and then say what if you were right or wrong, basically. <laughs> So he's 32 and his brother is 30. I have a brother, Kevin, who is a single dad to a three-year-old. Kevin is, lives in the same city as me, but we don't have any family or relatives here, just a few friends. Kevin has a habit of dumping his kid on me at random times to watch while he goes out on dates with women. Mm -mm. So far, he's gone out for four dates while expecting me to watch my nephew. It bothered me because I have work commitments, I'm a nurse, and my schedule can be unpredictable. And so he's caused me issues at work for dropping his kid off at my house without telling me first. Last week, he did it again. He came over at 6 p.m. and entered my house with my nephew. He has a spare key. While I was showering and left the house immediately. I got out the shower and was shocked to see my nephew standing there alone. I asked where his dad was and he said he just left. I knew he wanted me to watch my nephew. I called him several times on the phone and he did not pick up. I was so mad. I was almost freaking out because I was getting late for my shift. I sent him a text telling him to pick up his son now or I'd call the cops for child abandonment. Okay. Okay. Hold up. He texted back begging that I suck it up this time because he had an important date and that he couldn't leave in the middle of it. Child, if it's not a job interview... You better come get your child, okay? I told him I was serious and I'd do it and I'd give him 10 minutes to get home. He got home looking pissed and started yelling at me for ruining his date and making him leave in the middle of it because he just couldn't bother to skip one damn shift to watch my nephew. Sir, This your brother must not have a real job. Can't, can't have a real job. Can't have a real job. I told him I never agreed to watch his son and he made me do it. He said it was an emergency, which made me laugh because calling a date night an emergency is just absurd. Long story short, he left with my nephew, but hasn't stopped blaming me for spoiling his date and probably causing damage to the relationship between him and his potential girlfriend. His girlfriend should understand. It's been a week, or potential, whatever. It's been a week and he's still salty about it and demanding that I make him, <laughs> make it up to him and cause his date and lie to her and tell her that some sob story and why he had to leave but i said i just won't do that <laughs> am i the asshole <laughs> i feel like no like i said i think you did what you had to do in order to get what you had to get done what do y'all think in the comments because <laughs> okay she's 23 and her ex-husband is 35. my ex-husband and i have one-year-old twins together and due to a lot of complications from that pregnancy i got a partial hysterectomy we divorced during my pregnancy after I discovered he cheated on me. He's a good dad and his girlfriend is now pregnant 
He cheated on me with his current girlfriend, but she didn't know he had a wife at the time, and I firmly believe that. I run a pretty successful baking company in our small town, and I do custom desserts, including gender reveal cakes. My husband's girlfriend called me and asked if I would be willing to do a gender reveal cake for them and said it would mean a lot that the mother of her baby siblings made the cake for the party. I told her that I had to think about it, but eventually told her no. I'm admittedly incredibly bitter at my ex for cheating on me while I was bedridden and medically fragile being pregnant with his children. And I did not want to be involved in the celebration of their new child. I did specify that it wasn't her, but I couldn't do it. And she said, all right, and hung up. My ex called me and told me I was being rude and unreasonable and completely unprofessional, putting our issues before my business. I told him I was allowed to refuse service to anyone and hung up on him. I feel like I have let my feelings get in the way of my business. And if I made the cake, it's not like I have to be there to celebrate. On the, under, on the other hand, I do feel like I'm allowed to refuse business however I see fit. Am I the asshole? Hmm. Okay, so what do y'all think in the comments? I honestly don't think that she is the asshole. I completely understand, especially if this is a woman that he cheated on her with. Like, call it petty, call it what you want, but I wouldn't be doing it either, baby. It's not happening. No, ma'am, no, Pam. And it sucks because it's like she shouldn't have to, you know, deal with the consequence of, consequences of his actions. However... I don't know. I just hope that you don't carry this pettiness into like, well, I don't think it's petty, but I just hope you don't carry this into not like allowing his um, children to see his other siblings and stuff like that. But I mean, I feel like that's a reach for me to gather from just this one situation. However, um, yeah. And then you said your twins are only one and y'all just got a divorce not too long ago. So that means he has another baby and one year olds, uh, one year old yeah because it's more than one person <laughs> child anyway um yeah i get it you need time you're still healing no i don't think you the asshole not not me not my, not my opinion but what y'all think in the comments i would love to hear especially this is real tricky child but what y'all think what y'all think today's secret comes from sarah hi guys i want to tell you a story about a friend of mine let's call her sammy Back in 2021, I rented an apartment and was letting Sammy live with me rent-free as she was having a really hard time. I wanted to help her out, so I said to her, all I really need from you is to occasionally help with the groceries. For context, I was working full-time in retail and she was working about two days a week in hospitality. However, this wasn't our long-term play. We both wanted to become actors and were trying really hard to crack into the industry. We bonded a heap over how tough a career path it is, but it got complicated at times. As I'm sure you can imagine, it's really common in the industry to be rejected from roles. Sammy really struggled with rejection and would tend to get jealous pretty easily. For example, if I ever landed a role that she auditioned for, she would ignore me for a few days, then act like nothing at all happened. I figured it was always a bit of a red flag, but I didn't think too much of it at the time. It was around this time that we both auditioned for a role in a new Netflix show. Oh, get it. Oh. We both got through to the final callbacks, and then I heard nothing. With that in mind, I assumed neither of us got the role. A few weeks later, she told me she got promoted at work and would now be working more. She's lying. However, she said she was still worried about paying rent, so I told her we could reevaluate the issue later. Eventually, it got to the point where I was not really getting anywhere with any career path I was on. It wasn't working in retail, and the acting thing was getting really hard. I decided to chase another dream of mine and go to Europe. 10 months later, I was there. I continued to pay rent while I was away while Sammy still lived in the apartment. However, halfway through my trip, I got a call from my sister. Uh oh. She asked me why I did not tell her Sammy was in a new Netflix show. I was floored. I had absolutely no idea Sammy was in the show, and it was even weirder 
because I had been talking to her while I was away and she didn't mention it. Not once. Something did not sit right with me. I decided to scroll through my past call logs and found a call from a casting agency I did not <gasps> remember taking. As I had accidentally left my phone at home that day. So I called the agency. I'm going to faint. <laughs> Please don't. We need you on this episode. Okay. <laughs> I called the agency and spoke to a representative to ask what the call was regarding all those months ago. She's done a school of rock. Oh. <laughs> Uh, this is Mr. Schneebel. <laughs> <laughs> no. It turns out they had actually offered me the role no. and that I had declined the job. I can't breathe. Apparently, my profile was removed from the agency as they were told I, quote, no longer wanted to be an actor. After that, I did some more investigating and found that all my headshots and showreels had been deleted from my cloud and all my saved folders. Fuck. What? All my work was gone. Oh, oh, oh no. Maybe I will faint as well. <laughs> <laughs> we need both of you. <laughs> Once I found this out, I went to talk to my friend about it, but she was screening my calls. I was halfway across the world, and there was nothing else I could do but try to call her. When I returned home three weeks later, all of her stuff was out of my apartment and no one knew how to get in contact with I'm her. <laughs> I like to believe that I worked hard to get where I am. And I like to believe I am a kind person. But I really do not know how to feel about this entire situation other than feeling like my dreams were ripped out from underneath me. A week ago... I got a message from an unknown number, spoiler, it was her, asking to go and get coffee. Part of me really wants to meet up with her and just ask her why she lied about so many things. But another part of me just wants to politely decline and never talk to her again. You know what Sammy's done? She's dyed her hair. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's dad wants to keep us a secret for the rest of his life. So I met the man in question about three years ago. We're both in our 30s. We weren't in an official relationship, but got together last year. I ended up getting pregnant, which obviously wasn't planned. He knew I wasn't on birth control. I told him prior to anything happening between us. After telling him about the pregnancy, his initial reaction was him asking if I'm willing to abort the child because he can't afford to raise one at this time. He was pro-life before this apparently and said he can't believe he's asking me to do this since he always thought he would take care of his child no matter what and he always was against abortions. I couldn't go through with the abortion and told him that I'm keeping the baby. He eventually came around and we met up once more while he told me that I don't have to do this alone and he is fine with us keeping the baby. He then changed his mind again. Every time I tried to talk to him, it didn't go well. He was adamant that he can't be in the baby's life at all. However, wouldn't leave or block me for good because he liked the updates, ultrasound pics, etc. He said that part of him still cares about her. Last time we spoke was a month before I gave birth to my baby girl. He said he can't stay in her life because his family will disown him, since we're not married, and the baby will hate him anyways because he's a loser. I told him that she will probably hate him a lot more if he abandons her. He didn't like that. I guess that comment struck a nerve and he hasn't talked to me since. I sent him pictures of her the day she was born and a few times my hormonal self would beg him to meet her. I know, pathetic, but it is what it is. He would open the messages but wouldn't respond. It was bad for my mental health to be ignored like that, so I blocked him after four months of no response. He knows where I live if he ever wanted to get in contact, therefore blocking him won't stop him from seeing his child if he really wanted. But it makes me a little less anxious since I'm no longer waiting for that text that will never come. No one in his life knows about us, not even his friends. I asked him once if he talked to anyone about the baby and he said no, it's too embarrassing, and that he can't tell anyone he got someone pregnant. I guess he's planning to take the secret to the grave. My boyfriend left me on the road with a broken leg, unable to get up, and now he misses me. On the 6th of October, my partner, 26 male, and I, 22 female, attended a medical ball that my workplace hosted. For some reference, I am a registered nurse and he is completing an electrical trade and an engineering degree. We have been on the rocks for a while, and the night before the ball, we had gotten into quite a big fight. We'd fight about where our lives were taking us, he wanted to settle down in our small hometown, and I had interest in moving away. Nonetheless, I was willing to settle down with him. 
However, in the end, it seemed like I was giving up a lot more of my future to Sue's desires. I'd travel 100 kilometers to see him most of the time, but he'd complain that an hour was too long to drive to see me. He'd also do things like subscribe to OnlyFans accounts just to see my reaction. The night of the ball, the vibe was off. Despite me trying to introduce him to some of my work colleagues or getting him to dance with me, all he wanted to do was sit at the table and scroll through Facebook. He would often just go outside and talk to his friends on the phone. When we were in the Uber making our way back to my place, we had gotten into an argument due to me questioning why he came to the ball if his intentions were to sit outside and barely speak to me. He didn't like being questioned. He shut down my feelings. As we arrived back at my house, he decided to end things with me. He said it was due to us living 100 kilometers away from each other, and he said that we weren't compatible. At the time, this took me by surprise, and me being me, I started crying. He then proceeded to walk down the street, and I ran after him to try and change his mind. As I'd done this, he also sprinted ahead. I was wearing heels at the time, and I was running so fast that my legs couldn't keep up with the speed I was going, so I fell over quite hard. I could not get back up as my right knee and lower leg hurt too much. I was crying and screaming in pain that I needed help and he just left me there. My phone was dead at this point so I waited crying and yelling in agony until someone walked by and called me an ambulance. It turns out that I had a fractured tibia and I had completely torn my meniscus and PCL, the strongest ligament in the knee. Fast forward to two months and I have now had a knee reconstruction and I'm unable to weight bear for six to ten weeks. He has recently messaged me saying how much he misses me and how incomplete his life feels without me. He didn't realize I had broken my leg and messed up the inside of my knee. However, I don't think that's any excuse. Personally, I think if he cared about me or had any human decency, he wouldn't have left me crying in the middle of the road unable to get up. I'm just looking for some advice for what I should do. And for the update, OP says that she did not end up today i fucked up by getting a guy in trouble with his girlfriend twice twice mm, let's get into it <laughs> just happened and it's both hilarious and terrible this lad in work was upstairs making the pizza dough and no other staff were upstairs i walked up to him and gave him a fist bump and asked yes bro who's your weed guy completely oblivious to the airpods he had in um, that he was using to talk to his girlfriend. He looked at me and shushed me and then hung up his call. He told me his girlfriend doesn't know he smokes weed yet, but it was too late. She called him back and told him off. I could hear the poor bugger pleading to her that I was mistaken and I was thinking of someone else. An hour later, he's downstairs and I see him. His hat was covering his ears, so I assumed he didn't have headphones in. So I walked up with I walked up to him and say sorry for getting you in trouble and he replied that it's fine no harm done and then once again I asked so about your weed guy and he panics and throws his airpods on the floor sorry bro the too long didn't read says I asked the guy about his weed man twice while his girlfriend was on the phone so he lied to her and then got caught up again mm. what do y'all think about this that's funny as hell to me I'm not gonna lie but dang child this kind of like that last one that last video where i'm just like i don't understand the point of i don't understand the point of lying about these things like y'all gotta really be with people that want to be with you okay you cannot manipulate forms of yourself or like hide parts of yourself in hopes that you can still get the person that you want it's not fair it's not cool not to me i know this wasn't that deep but there'd be a running theme sometimes in some some of these um post and i just think it needs to be addressed but yeah just be yourself i promise you'll find that person that wants to be with you i promise you will or if you do want to change change but do it for you you know what i mean don't do it for nobody else do it for you but anyway yeah <laughs> what do y'all think of these comments my husband has been lying to me since we got married Ooh. let's get into it mm. so her husband is 25 and she's 30 I found out my husband has been lying to me about smoking. We've been married four years and together a total of seven years. I have a heart condition and struggle in general with asthma. When we met, my husband was a smoker and when we became serious, I told him that he has to stop smoking if he wants to marry me. Nothing against people that smoke, but I would not want to marry a smoker as it affects my health. Taking into account that we weren't engaged yet at this point, he could have walked away at any point that's true so could you but okay let's keep going let's see let's see 
He then stopped smoking, or at least that's what he told me. And a few months later, we were engaged. Okay. He had what I thought a relapse once or twice, but he told me about it. And so I was helping him through it, knowing that quitting isn't easy. We have been married for now four years. And I keep finding evidence around the house that he is smoking and actually never stopped. We took out a life insurance policy two years ago when he was a non-smoker. And I found the papers where he stated that he smoked. He filled in the papers twice. One copy for me to see saying that he is not smoking. And then the copy he actually submitted saying that he is a smoker. Oh, he doing a lot. I found several online delivery notes from the past four years where he had cigarettes and vaping things delivered to his work address. I finally actually caught him smoking in the house when I was diagnosed with COVID. And his defense is that... It, I was supposed to be sleeping and shouldn't have seen him smoking. I was admitted to the hospital for COVID pneumonia that same night, and I would have nary, never married him if he was still smoking, and he knows that. Not sure what to do now or how to move forward. Any advice? What do y'all think in the comments? I really don't even understand why you continue to even pursue dating him if you knew he was a smoker from jump, you know what I mean? Like, I really don't understand that purpose, like that point. Because like, of course you did say like, you told him at a certain point that, you know, like he needs to stop smoking, but you came in knowing that he was a smoker and you decided to still be with him. And how did you not notice for four years that he was smoking? Like, yeah, you found little things once or twice, but obviously you didn't notice, so. I'm not going to say it hasn't been affecting you, but at the same time, I just don't think it was fair that you tried to give him an ultimatum and then just expected him to change his life around. Now, I also don't think it was fair that he agreed and, you know, then proceeded to marry you knowing that that was one of your deal breakers. It's just really completely messed up. I don't really know what advice I have, but um, yeah, that that's what I have to say about this. Am I the asshole for covertly losing weight as a bridesmaid and refusing to be set up with her friend after overhearing the bride call me fat? Whoa. Oh. My 30 female friend Kate's 30 female wedding was last weekend. We went to grad school together, but haven't seen each other in person in about two years. Though we FaceTime and kept up enough since then enough to where she invited me to be in her wedding. However, a large part of this is that her fiance, Kyle, 30 male, has eight groomsmen and she needed enough people. Sounds like a cult already. Mm. <laughs> about six months before the wedding, the bridesmaids were all talking in a group chat on Discord and I overheard Kate, who must have thought she was on mute or that her voice wouldn't carry rather snidely turn to kyle and say that i would quote round out the group because i would be a good quote counterweight to mm. her fiance's friend tim oh. the idea being that tim and i were both obese when she moved back towards the mic and said something about not being on mute i acted like i couldn't hear anything and said something <sighs> like yeah you were really far away you sounded like you were underwater i couldn't hear you oh i had been planning on losing weight anyways but i lost 35 Five pounds of fat okay. in six months Whoa. and put on four pounds of muscle largely out of spite oh, yes we spite love it. Is very that is the definition of revenge body <laughs> i've always hated pictures of myself and don't maintain social media so it wasn't outside the norm for no one to see me as soon as i knew what my plan was i ordered a size down in my bridesmaid's dress and then had it tailored in a little more i wore the tightest lululemons i could find when i met everyone at the hotel the day before and seeing the visceral shock on kate's face was priceless. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> At the wedding, I still walked in with Tim, but he was a bit stiff and awkward around me, which I attributed to nerves or just not caring for strangers. Later, after enough alcohol had been passed around, the truth finally came out that Kate wanted to set me up with Tim, which I refused. And before she was 86, Kate said, quote, you're not supposed to be skinnier than me. You're upstaging me at my <gasps> own wedding. There it is. We didn't have a knockdown drag out fight and it wasn't particularly dramatic, but apparently the other bridesmaids and groomsmen got the impression that I had somehow been a bitch to Tim and that it was shitty of me to refuse a date with him. Kate and I haven't spoken since the reception, during which I said congratulations and essentially ghosted after things went south. And now I'm sitting here wondering if I'm the asshole. <laughs> that is a good question, honestly, for this situation. You're definitely not the asshole for losing weight. That's fucking
fucking amazing for not telling anyone. You don't need to tell anyone. Like that's your like life it's and body. Your, your body, your choice, girly. Also saying no to the date. You can say no to any date you want. That is all you, girl. Were you rude to him is my question. Because like you should treat everyone kindly. So it's like I wonder if people's perception of her was skewed from the bride being a bridezilla. Yeah, I think for so. sure. I have always been insecure about myself, but it was amplified in relationships. I have a few mental illnesses that also make my insecurities worse, but relationships were always a catalyst for terrible thoughts about myself. I would always think that my significant other would cheat on me. It could be anything that would set me off, a new girl he'd followed or a post that he'd seen, but it would always send me into a worried frenzy. Am I even his type? Does he even like me? Why don't I look like her? These are the most common questions that plagued my mind in every relationship I had. When my now boyfriend of eight months came into the picture, all of that changed, or so I thought. He has shown me nothing but pure love, care and attention from the start. I had no doubt in my mind that he loved me because he always made sure to show it. He knows about my past toxic relationships and has made a point to drive himself away from being that. He did everything right, from flowers and gifts to calling and texting and hanging out in all of our spare time. We are inseparable. Twin flames, soulmates, two puzzle pieces. Until I started getting that nagging feeling again, something was off. I couldn't shake that feeling. He always let me check his phone, no questions asked, and I would find nothing each time, as he would find nothing on my phone as well. But still, I couldn't help but feel that something was wrong, that things were starting to get stale, and I was uninteresting to him, not enough to satisfy him anymore. So I did the unthinkable. It's a big ask. I would like you to maybe guess where you think this is going. Oh, my God. It has something to do with social media. Did they, like, go on Tinder or something? Close. I went behind his back and made a fake social media account to follow him on, made the profile look like a pretty girl and requested it. I wanted to see if he would accept it and message the account. It was sick, but I was so scared. He accepted the request and I started messaging him immediately. And once I sent those texts... He called me. I was nervous, but I picked up. And there he was to tell me that a random girl had messaged him and he was laughing about it. Great. That's nice. (laughs) I laughed along with him while he shared his screen and I had to watch him react to what I, on the fake account, was texting him in real time. It felt so, so wrong. Eventually, I had to leave for work, so he said our goodbyes and he promised he would update me. This is where things turned sour. This Reddit thread is much longer, so there's more to the story. Okay. Again, predictions, Sarah? Do you have any predictions? Did he catch on to that it was, like, his girlfriend? Not yet. Okay, not yet. This is what happened. He starts messaging the fake account again, but this time more flirtatious than they were before. I played along and he ended up asking for and then sending nude photos. (gasps) I was so shocked. I was shaking and didn't know what to do. Oh, no. I know. So I took screenshots of the conversation, sent it to my own account, and sent it to him. I was angry and hurt. I never knew he would do this. He didn't know it was me. He still doesn't know. So I guess she did all of that, sent it to herself, sent it to him, to be like, someone, some random sent me this, what okay, have you done? Right. I left early from work, he picked me up, and we started arguing immediately. He claimed it was fake screenshots, but I already knew. I knew it was him because it was me talking to him. He ended up lying to me for hours while I cried and pleaded with him. He only admitted it when I gave him an ultimatum. Tell me the truth or we are breaking up. Our relationship is not the same. It's been a few days, but the guilt is overwhelming. He feels terrible. Every time I see him, he cries and pleads with me, saying that he loves me so much. If I had not done this, we would have been okay. If I hadn't let these insecurities drive me to do this, this sick attempt at a loyalty test, we would have been okay. No. Yeah, I don't think so. No. <laughs> I am extremely ashamed of myself. He was the only good thing in my life and my selfishness got in the way. Fuck, she says at the end. To get off my chest. Ooh. <gasps> yeah, good. <laughs> when I was approaching my 34th birthday, I made the decision that I didn't want to wait any longer to have a baby, even if it meant being a single mother. Aww. I like that. I love that. What a queen. I didn't have any dependence and was in a good place financially. I knew I could afford, both financially and emotionally, to raise a child. Also, I knew that if I kept waiting for someone to come along, I could be way past 35 before a baby came into the picture, and I didn't want that for my life. Though I was technically single, 
I was in a friends with benefits arrangement that had been going on for about five months. We were just friends at first for about 18 months before we both realized we were attracted to each other and had actually started to develop feelings for one another. So why didn't we just date, you might be wondering. Well, he had plans to move away to another state, so he made it very clear from the beginning that he didn't want to get serious with anyone. I accepted this, and that's why we ended up as friends with benefits. That never works though, no, right? Friends no. with benefits, yeah. Given I was keen to have a baby, I decided to come off my birth control without telling him to see if I could fall pregnant naturally. No! No! I f- no! 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 Wait, wait, actually, I needed a second to process that, but no! No! Oh my god, that's... I actually feel shit that I called her a queen at the start of this. Yeah, me that's too. That's not queen behaviour. Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> We're unqueening her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I figured it would take some time to fall pregnant, and if I did, and it fell close to his moving away date, there's a world where I wouldn't tell him about the pregnancy. What? I didn't expect him to take any responsibility anyway. I was more looking for an unofficial sperm donor. That is, can I say that's fucked? That is really fucked. That's fucked. Like, illegal on so many levels. You know how, like, stealthing is now illegal? Like, if, um... Uh, someone a penis haver takes a condom off yeah. during sexual intercourse that's illegal now surely this is illegal oh. that is like stealthing in the backwards way exactly i would consider this in the stealthing family thank you yes. me too definitely that is actually terrible i am speechless okay sorry i'll just keep going <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that i was more fertile than i thought <gasps> we got pregnant on my first month of birth control I love how she said we, we got like, pregnant. Um, you are not a team here. Oh, that. Oh my. Okay, sorry. Yep. <laughs> I decided I had to tell him about the pregnancy because he wasn't moving for another five months, and yes, obviously would find out anyway. Five months pregnant. Fucking hell. The holy cannoli. I played it off as an accident and told him that I knew about his plans and didn't want anything to change for him. I told him I intended to have the baby, but totally understood if he didn't want to be involved. At first, he seemed okay with that plan. However, within a couple of days, he said he couldn't move away now and that he wanted to be there for me and the baby. Oh my god, so this guy's like an actual gem, an angel. He then asked me to officially be his girlfriend. This all took me by total surprise. It was not the reaction I expected from him at all. But at the same time, it made me really happy, so I said yes. Oh, no. I, do, I really don't want to be judgy because this person has trusted us with her secret, but I'm not happy. Me too. We moved in together after a few weeks, and over the course of the pregnancy, we grew closer and closer together, and our relationship developed into something wonderful. He also grew really excited about the baby. He came with me to every appointment, got a second job to be able to provide the best he could for our daughter, was always massaging my back, rubbing my belly, and going out searching for whatever I craved to eat. My boyfriend does that and I'm not even pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't have asked for a better partner. Unfortunately, our baby has had very bad complications at birth and ended up with severe health consequences that we will have to deal with for all of her life. She's only a year old and has already needed three surgeries, countless doctor's appointments, as well as constant therapy and medications. It has been really hard on us, emotionally, physically, and financially. Taking care of her has consumed our whole life, but it has also brought us even closer together in this fight for our baby girl's health. Which it would. Like, there's no one else probably in your circle of friends or your family that understand what you're going through. A month ago... He asked me to marry him. He said he loved us more than anything and he wanted to be with us forever to take care of us. I was incredibly happy and of course said yes. After all, we did have feelings for each other long before all of this and we do have a really good and healthy relationship. Except for the small fact that he still thinks the pregnancy was an accidental failure of birth control. I don't think I can ever bring myself to tell him that I got pregnant on purpose, particularly after so much time has passed. But at the same time, I don't want to start our marriage with that weighing over me. I don't think he would leave because of this. 
but I don't really know if he would ever forgive me. Especially because of all the stress and struggles we've had due to our daughter's health condition. Should I come clean? Is it even relevant anymore? Am I the asshole for not splitting rent with my boyfriend? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I, 24 female, have been dating my boyfriend, 26, for a year and a half. About six months ago, my boyfriend started asking me if I wanted to move in with him. Although I wanted to live with him, I was a little hesitant for multiple reasons. I lived with my parents rent-free and I got along with them really well. My boyfriend's apartment was small and kind of ugly and it made my commute 15 minutes longer to work. However, I was eventually convinced when he said I didn't have to pay rent. He lived alone before and was paying rent anyway, so I thought it made sense. So I moved in with him in November and things have seemed fine. It was an easier transition than I thought and it was a really good decision for our relationship. Also, just to note, it's not like I don't contribute anything. I do most of the grocery shopping and cooking and I've been gradually buying furniture and decorations to make the place less ugly. However, a few days ago, he very suddenly asked me hypothetically if he wanted me to pay rent, would I? I was a bit surprised. He's never brought it up before, so I didn't know where it was coming from. Actually, I feel it may be coming from one of his close friends who does not like me for whatever reason, but that's another story. I don't want to be a freeloading princess, but like one of the reasons I agreed to move in with him was because he told me I didn't have to pay rent. Really, there's nothing stopping me from moving back in with my parents and taking all of the stuff that I bought with me. I explained that he told me I didn't have to pay rent and I would appreciate it if he kept his word. But of course, if it was a financial burden, that I could help a bit. After this conversation, he dropped it, but now he has me second-guessing myself. We've talked about finances together a few times. I know he makes a decent amount of money at his job and only has a little bit of student loans left and no other debt. However, I do make almost as much as him and I'm not sure if he's getting resentful of me not contributing to the rent. Am I the asshole for making a comment about my daughter's relationship at a family dinner? Disclaimer, this is not my story. My daughter Diana, 19 female, started dating her first boyfriend, Matt, in October. My husband and I were very excited for her because during high school she was a little behind her classmates. She didn't go to parties, never learned to do makeup, and never dated anyone. I was worried for her especially because her two sisters are ahead of her in these things and are also a little bit more stereotypically pretty. But when she told us she started dating Matt, it eased my worries. For the first two months, she was always at Matt's house or out on a date with him. She talked about him constantly and he was always stopping by to drop things off for her. They had plans to spend New Year's Eve together, but my husband caught the virus, so the plans never happened. Since then, I noticed that we have heard and seen almost nothing about Matt. I started to suspect that they broke up. I started to think that they broke up and Diana didn't want to be embarrassed by telling us. We had a family dinner with our extended family last week and my sister-in-law was asking Diana about Matt, specifically when she was going to introduce him to the family. She said she wasn't sure because she's been busy with school and they haven't been hanging out that much. Right after Diana said that, I said to my sister-in-law, I think they broke up and Diana doesn't want to tell us. Diana got upset at me for saying that and left the party until an hour later but refused to talk to me for the rest of the night. The next day, she said that they were still dating but that comment made her feel uncomfortable. She said she would have been mortified if I had forced her to announce her breakup to her whole family. I told her she was being oversensitive and that it doesn't matter because they weren't broken up. She's still mad at me and said that I'm in the wrong. She also doesn't want to talk to me until I apologize. Am I the asshole for being upset with my sister for wanting to skip my wedding because of her miscarriage? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I, 28 female, am getting married next week. Invitations are out, wedding planning has been complete, and everything is going according to plan. However, my sister, 31 female, just had a miscarriage. My mom told me she said that she decided not to come to the wedding. I was dumbfounded and I called my sister to talk about it and she said she is exhausted and doesn't feel like attending. I told her that this is my wedding, not some family dinner that she and her husband decided to skip. She apologized hoping that I understand, but I said that I don't understand because I don't understand what her miscarriage has to do with being at my wedding. It's not like she gave birth and needed to stay with the baby. She must have had me on speaker because her husband heard and started yelling at me about how this is a traumatic experience that my sister just went through and said I was insensitive to talk to her like that. I asked him to stay out of it, but he started arguing with me and telling me to respect my sister's wishes. He told me to respect my sister's wishes and respect that they're grieving. He insisted he let me talk to her, but he said we are done talking. I ended up losing my temper with him and he told me F your wedding then hung up. My fiance was in the room and heard him say that. He wanted to uninvite him and my sister over this, but I didn't let him. I called my mom and she promised to speak to my sister and convince her to come. My dad called me later on and started scolding me about harassing my sister and told me to leave her alone. I asked him if my brother-in-law told him about our fight and he got defensive and told me to get off both my sister's and her husband's back and drop it. I told him how upset and hurt I was that my sister decided to skip my wedding and how little she thought of it. He said that my sister had a valid reason and I was coming across unfeeling and selfish not to see that and lash out over her missing a party. 
But this is not a party, it's my wedding, it matters to me. I was there for her, so why can't she do the same and show up for a few hours? Today, I fucked up by realizing I was ripped off six years ago. Hmm. So back six years ago, my wife and I went to our first ever Boxing Day sale, excited in search of a new TV. The TV on sale was held at a major electronic retailer in the CBD. Okay. We got in early to line up so we wouldn't miss out on the new Samsung 65-inch TV on sale for the cheapest we had seen it. We got in the door as quick as we possibly could and waved down the closest attendant and snapped the last one up just in time. Oh, snagged the last one up, tightened down. Okay, okay. They were snapping at the attendant. Okay, shop. Reading be fundamental though. The attendant... Uh, organized package pickup at the loading dock around back but due to the sales and chaos on the shop floor we couldn't have it until later that afternoon no problem we'll get lunch later that afternoon we returned to for our collection dropped the seats down and loaded up got home unpacked to enjoy our new tv six years later we thought for christmas we would update our tv and went and got a 75 inch 4k for better picture quality and a larger screen we unboxed set up the tv and couldn't believe how much bigger it was i moved the old samsung 65 inch into the bedroom and set up a wall mount and that's when i noticed xxx 55 xxx in the serial number strange usually the number refers to the inches on the tvs on of the screen i would have never known that two minutes of googling later this serial number definitely is for a 55 inch tv but how can this be when we bought a 65 inch on the sale of the year to our place our old 55 inch that blew up my wife files away everything in an orderly fashion so i went digging and sure enough we purchased a 65 inch tv and it's taken us six years of watching it to realize that we collected the wrong tv well six years have passed and i'm not going to bother Having that argument, I will just leave it to our stupidity and be grateful that our new screen feels even bigger than anticipated. The Too Long Didn't Read says the 65-inch TV got given for a 55-inch and we didn't notice until six years until we got our upgraded to a 75-inch and we couldn't believe the difference of how big it was, yada, yada, yada. That's crazy. So how did y'all like that story? What do y'all think about it? Honestly, I guess there isn't much you can do, but I don't know. Is there something you could really do? It's six years later. There's more than likely that TV model is not even in stock no more. Like, that's crazy, though. Mm. Well, shit. Like they said, they grateful for, you know, the unexpected upgrade or what it feels like. You know what I mean? So what do y'all think in the comments?